episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Like watching my husband shit on her like a slim blaze. I'm Josh. Charlie. Trevor. Oh, I must have been daydreaming. Oh, Ari. Speaking of daydreaming, today on Literary Gladiators we're going to be discussing The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Shut up. I remember going over that in freshman year. Of yeah, I went over in freshman year too. It's the second thing we went over in the book, uh, and it was the one that stuck out because my delicate heart condition was terrible. <laughs> Why am I wearing this? Just, just out of curiosity. As you can see today, uh, Charlie is wearing Charlotte. Charlotte. He's the Charlotte. He. <laughs> I gotta yeah, go. He, I gotta go with that on the web. Charlene is wearing a cheesecloth today. Charlene is from Dinosaurs. By the way, if you never watch Dinosaurs, watch it. It's good. But this is a bit of a strategy to uh, sort of the tangents out of the intellect. Thank you. You may now unveil me and kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> All unscripted. <coughs> Already, Ari, uh, what is the discussion starter for today? Is this well, like terrifying? I was, I was, for the discussion starter, I was thinking, Walter Mini always seems to, you know, he daydreams about things, but, like, things that happen, like, being a fighter pilot, trying to save someone's life, being in court and winning a case, and, and I was just thinking, how would you compare what Mitty was like back then with contemporary times? I, what what things do you think people do when they like think kind of like because kind of, they came out with a movie for a surrender Life themselves for their wives? That's what exactly. They, like they, that they, came out, they came out with a Secret Life of Walter Mitty movie starring Ben Stiller a few oh, years ago. Oh yeah, I, I know they, I know they had a movie and it was actually it was decent. It was decent mm -hmm. and um, so basically I'm asking like when with my fellow gladiators I'm asking that if. When you, what do you think could be the equivalent of what Mitty was doing back then in modern day age? I think people these days escape through daydream and. There is a an author named David Nobbs who wrote a nob, three novels, which were later turned into a television series called *The Fall and Rise of Reginald Perrin*, Ooh. in which a bored businessman, one of the higher ups in a dessert company. <gasps> oh. would be prone to daydreams at perhaps some of the war bizarre moments, and mm. some of these daydreams could actually take on bizarre qualities. Mm. Case in point, whenever his mother-in-law was mentioned in conversation, he would invariably think of a hippopotamus running through the mud. <laughs> it's actually a lot more amusing than it sounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think some of Mitty's um, daydreams are just because he really wants to just escape from his old boring wife. I don't know, life and wife. I, I feel like he doesn't care about his wife that much. Hey, yo, what? he wants that soup. You want that soup you wanted? Yeah, well, guess what? Can you really blame soup. him sometimes? Uh, yeah, the wife seems very pushy. She is dominant. She, she she's, she's like a dominatrix. She's like a dominatrix. But, you know, what's interesting yep. is Walter Mitty, he's referred to as either Walter Mitty or Mitty. His wife is Mrs. Mitty, mm -hmm. which within the text that shows you that she is clearly not really a spouse-like figure, she's more like a, mother. a parental or figure a, or a, an authoritarian. Well, if, I, if I may, uh, what I got out of it is, I, first of all, I thought, you know, obviously of course these are flashbacks, but when Hold on. Uh, but also, in his fantasies, he is yeah, well, yeah. Captain Mitty, Doctor Mitty. That's what Mitty. I said, yes. He's, much he's always like a, a, an authoritative figure. He's authoritarian in his thoughts, but he is the a meek follower to his wife in real life. So there is a song like me uh, that I want to mention that I think is the, the perfect... It's basically Walter Mitty, but put into a song. The song is called The Kid, and it was originally written, I believe, by a, a folk singer named Buddy Monlock. Hmm. And Peter, Paul, and Mary also covered it. And it's literally, I'll just say the, the first line, it's like, I'm the kid who ran away with the circus, and, he, and then he goes, runs away with the circus, and he's like, Hot towel, please. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on top of the high wire, look, he's working without a net this time. 
he's a real hefty flyer. And then they keep doing more verses, and at the end, you realize that the entire all the verses are just him daydreaming. Ooh. And then it sometimes gets him in trouble. And the very last line of the song um, is something like, maybe they could all one day come true. Mm. And I, th I feel that it's very um, similar to Walter Mitty. It's just in music form instead of in book form or short story form. Mm. Mm. It's definitely a song I'll have to uh, look it's, into. Yeah, it's called The Kid and it's by Buddy Monlock. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll look, look it up. Yeah. Same here. Uh, quick, quick digression. Not even 30 seconds. It's amazing what some actors and actresses, especially Abbott Costello and I love, you know, all these actresses from the old uh, old days, could do with just so few props. As you can see here, I don't know why I'm wearing this, so it's okay. <laughs> but it's, if you can, you know, I'm doing comic relief here. It's to reduce <laughs> the tangents, like which is exactly what you're doing right now. Well, it is me, but it's amazing. You can see all Excuse the things. Excuse me, princess. Oh well. So what did, what did you think about the book? Well, I thought it was an interesting take on, or the sword story on 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 the board individual. I mean, no. it could have been anybody who he was with. Just Mr. Thurber chose to throw it, throw in his his wife. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, uh, Walter Mitty's been described as a Thurber-like character, yeah. and has been reflective of Thurber himself. Uh, I really don't know so much about his background, but. If For some reason, reason, and this is going to sound a little ridiculous, but I always think Walter Mitty, for some reason, reminds me of Chaz Finster from Rugrats. Oh, yeah. Be because, like, he, 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 him and Stu, they, like, always do the inventions together, but Stu's the one that always gets it right. Mm -hmm. And Chaz kind of like, oh, I wish he I gets could it do right. this. You mean, according to Stu, he gets it right. According, well, you, you know what I'm saying. Stu was able to at least complete something. Yes. But with, with Chaz, he's always working I'm like my together. husband. That's I'm just like, fine. I can imagine if, if Walter Mitty would look like someone, it would look like Chaz Finster. Eh. Hey, honey, I just got out of the shower. Smack me a little. Oh, God. He'd look like Chaz Finster, but have the Merrill situation of Howard DeVille. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah that, I, I would say Howard DeVille more so, because Howard DeVille, uh, Betty is much mm -hmm. more uh, forceful and aggressive, and uh, Howard is very, he's a wuss. Yeah, yeah, you know, I would agree with that. But, but I can uh, imagine him looking like Chaz Finster. I mean, maybe. <laughs> that's what my. But mind. I like it when he finally sticks up to his wife, uh, saying, Does it ever occur to you that I am sometimes thinking? Yeah, no, it's never occurs to me that I'm sometimes acts thinking. Really, what do you think I'm asking? That's a breaking point in the I, story. I think the, the, the best line, though, in the entire story is the last line where it's like, he stands in front of the firing squad and then it's like, uh, the unscrupulous, uh, inscrutable, inscrutable, to the last, to the last. Yeah. How did you take that line? I took it as he's not going to stand stand for his wife's treatment anymore, and he's We're gonna not face, gonna he's gonna take face it. the music. Mm -hmm. No We're matter. Not, uh... Even he, and and the mo the the more likelihood is actually that even if the firing squad, in, in quotes, if the firing squad were to hit him, it wouldn't kill him. He'd have he'd still be able to go on with his life, mm -hmm. and he's inscrutable to the last. Interesting way to look at. I know that in uh, in English class they told us it meant he faces death without fear, which in a way, but that that is kind of facing. Except it's not death. It's uh. Well, it is. Maybe, no, it is death in a way. It, it it's death as in death of his Glorious? insecure. No, um, the death of his insecure self. Death of yes. his self that is unable to do anything. There was a in the early 2010s. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what year, but in the early 2010s, there was a adaptation of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty made into a movie starring Ben Stiller. Um, it's basically the same as this Walter Mitty, except it's definitely more of a modern take on it. And instead of it being his mother. Who's the issue in question? It's it's some of his coworkers and his bosses and stuff. That I he thought, wants to. I, you mean his wife? Well, I meant his wife, excuse me. Yeah. But yeah. it was... It, intro, so it's more than one person that... Yeah, it wasn't just his wife. It was his... Um, it was like his co-workers and his boss were making fun of him and making him feel weak and insecure. His wife, in a way, was still kind of a dominatrix, just not as bad as it was <laughs> in the story. But definitely a good... Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my I God. A dominatrix hurt me. Yeah, they need to... Uh, they have to... 
can't tie that one for me. I think it's something that they have to do in the movie format because, because it's longer and it's not it's yeah. not yeah. the um the, the 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 daydreams are much different in the movie. Like there's this one where he's uh basically pretending like he's taking a rocket to space while they play Space Oddity in Dark the background. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. David Bowie for the win. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. So very interesting movie. It's it's okay. It's not great, but it's still worth seeing, especially yeah, yeah. because it it it's just mm -hmm. I like it a lot because it's it's based off one of my favorite short stories. So. I'll look into it a bit. But and if you're into the into the vintage movie scene, there's also another version of another adaptation in movie form featuring Danny Kaye. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There is that. I never saw that. You one. mean is that the original? I well. For me, that was the original one until I read the short stories. Because they had one in black and white, too. Really? I'll yeah, they had, back in the 40s, they had uh, an adaptation of The Secret Life with Walter Mitty. There's been a few of them. That is what I'm thinking of, that I must have been watching the Turnerized version. Mm. That may... There, there may have been a... There was a play that was, adapt, was adapted into a play. Yeah. There were several yeah, adaptations. Of the polish. Story. Polish, I'm a but super dad, you know, I gotta polish everything inside the, uh, you. I'm sure that there are multiple uh, collections, uh, some uh, of which include Thurber's other works, uh, where you can find this. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the, uh, uh, I got one from uh, the New Yorker, even though... Nope. Uh, That's where I first heard the story. The New Yorker. The New Yorker, the New Yorker. Very, very in particular, good. a collection of New Yorker work humors, mm. just short stories spoofs, poetry, a collection called Fierce Pajamas. Interesting name for a... Uh, it actually came from an E.B. White short story that was actually e. one, of the, one of the openings of yeah. the collection called Dusk in Fierce Pajamas. Oh, but I'm we should, we should do Charlotte's Web on that. Yeah, now you need to do Charlotte's Web. That's and you can something do we should definitely things. consider. Yeah. But yeah. I would give it a 4.5. Yeah, so would I. You know what? I think I give Walter Mitty a, a 4.75. No, no math. Yeah. Hey, be lucky I didn't go into the cosmic scale on that one. Oh. 4.16. My shitty husband did that to me. I'll give it a 3.14159265358988. Me pi. You know what? I wanted to thank you, want to thank you guys for going over the story because I really like the story. Oh, it's our pleasure. Welcome. Happy birthday. And be sure, it is not my birthday. And be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep, keep reading. reading.